for the touch of your lips, dear, but much more for the touch of your whips, dear. You can raise welts like nobody else as we dance to the masochism tango. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Ourgasm. This is the podcast where we talk about decolonizing sexuality and gender. I am Lindsay G. I use she, her, or they, them pronouns. And unfortunately, my co-host Lenny is not able to join us this week for this episode because she is very busy doing hot girl shit, as I'm sure you're all aware. (laughs) And this week, I'm so excited to be joined by Gaia Morissette. Gaia, can you tell us your pronouns and a little bit about you? I am she and her. I am a holistic sexual wellness specialist, a BDSM expert, a trauma recovery specialist, and um, a high priestess of divine sexual magic and elemental magics. Amazing. (laughs) That is a great (laughs) list of titles. Oh, my God. Uh, So this week, we are going to talk about the cult of marriage, which is something that Gaia has been experimenting with. But before we dive into that huge and awesome topic, I have a little disclaimer to read. (laughs) In this podcast, we use the heteronormative terms of the gender binary, men and women under the understanding that there are agender, androgynous, bigender, pangender, and gender fluid norms that exist outside of cis normativity. While we tend to use male and female as shorthand, this is not meant to undermine the very serious role of colonization and violence against the two-spirit and non-conforming individuals. Even more so, this is not meant to obscure the reality that two-spirit and non-conforming people are the most likely to experience sexual violence, as we have mentioned in earlier episodes. We do not believe in the gender binary without fluidity, which is a Euro-Western construct that forced a strict gender division on our societies, which itself is a form of violence. So with that out of the way, it is time for us to talk about the cult of marriage with Gaia Morissette. So so Gaia, okay. I know that you are conducting an experiment. I in am. marriage is, is how I understand <laughs> it. Can can you tell us a little bit about what what this experiment is and how it came about? Um, so a little bit of background. I'm uh, ethically non-monogamous, uh, pansexual. Oh. I I don't follow any of the norms of society that kind of <laughs> yes the, 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 the role that I play in the world is to kind of break break the rules if there's a rule I'm kind of like there to break it <laughs> however um during this pandemic that we've been in um you know looking at you know, getting, doing all of my grown uping stuff of like <laughs> wills and estates and logistical stuff. Um, having a conversation with my primary partner, who's a little older than me. And he, he was like, okay, so like when I die, I want to make sure that you get all this stuff. And oh. so I'm like, okay, well, let's go to the lawyer and see how do we make that happen. And so I went to the lawyer to try to find a loophole around not having to get married, actually, because I didn't want to be legally married. (laughs) I've never been legally married. And I was never it was on my was not on my to do list. It was the opposite for me. Absolutely. Lenny and I are both against marriage also, just so that you know, like, uh, you're you're in good company here on the (laughs) podcast. I totally get it. So we went to, so I went to the, the lawyer three times to try to find a loophole. And there were no loopholes that the only way to get these things is if I got legally married so that I uh, got marriage privilege. Wow. Not even like a common law marriage or. Well, the problem is, is that common law, there's certain laws, like there's certain things, privileges that you get for common law, but If your part, so you have to live with your partner. So that's a forced living arrangement. So you still would have to live with your partner for a prolonged period of time before it's even recognized in the event of death that um, there's a lot of things that won't be recognized. The hospital doesn't necessarily recognize Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. that is your lead. So family members could veto your common law person. Like there's all these things that could happen, even if you put it in your will 
that these were your wishes um oh. that could basically happen going to the bank became more, would become more complicated versus if we were legally married it's simple easy i here's my little certificate saying that i'm legally married okay i get everything that i want to get and it's super easy and so the huh. key the thing is, is that if you're not legally married, you don't get those privileges. Then there's also privileges around um, health benefits and right. medical and death benefits and taxes. And so there's a long list of marriage privilege that you only get if you're married. Yeah. Wow. Uh, that's that's interesting to hear, too, because I guess like little disclaimer here, I am in the United States and, and Gaia Canada. is in Canada. So while like there's a lot of things that are the same, you know, there's a lot of probably probably smaller things that are not, but it's interesting to hear that Canada is just as hardcore about marriage <laughs> as America. So I just so from that perspective, so we were like, okay, well, like let's just do that then. Let's just it's just sign the documents and you know and then we don't even need to tell anybody like no one needs to know that anything's changing <laughs> like it's be our secret so I started talking to people close to me about that I was getting married and immediately weird shit started to happen and this is when I started to, I didn't know that there was a cult until this started to happen so first of all I have a harem of lovers of being ethically non-monogamous Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to, I didn't think it was going to be an issue, but apparently it is an issue. So I oh. told my lovers that I was getting married and they're like, well, then things need to end. And I'm like, what do you mean things need to end? They're like, well, huh. I'm like, what do you mean? You, you, I, I'm still having sex with you and my partner and all the people that's in the harem. Like that's, that's <laughs> nothing has changed. Like you can still send me naughty pictures and we can still have sex and it's all good. Like nothing has changed. Yeah. All of a sudden, because I became a married woman, all of a sudden now I was off limits and oh, I was wild, which was really fascinating. This is when I was like, huh, there's a thing. There's some more things here. And so this is when I started to lean into, I'm going to do an experiment. I'm going <laughs> to drop into like, what are all the things? What are all the things that people see as married people and what it means as me as a woman being married and what, how do other women interact with me and how mm -hmm. to society interact with me differently. And so I came out of the oh closet <laughs> and I was like I, I put a post on Facebook and I'm like yeah. you know uh me and so and so are getting married we're engaged and I had like 700 people excited and encouraging and like wow rooting on for me he put it on his post on his page he got like five people and he has, he has people who interact with him all the time, but it wasn't important. Him getting married huh. wasn't a big deal. Me getting married was like the biggest accomplishment I had finally achieved as a woman <laughs> because some man picked me to oh, choose fuck. to be, uh, I'm, I'm important enough because some man picked me. And so this is where it leads back to colonization and slavery of women and the oppression of women and where the origins of marriage come from is oh this God. piece around as a woman my there's two things I need to accomplish in sort of in order to be valued as a woman get married hmm. and have babies right yep and so now I've accomplished some incredible things just in this year alone, like incredible. <laughs> like, like I, I, you know, in the last couple of years, I trained to be a, a, do an open swim marathon that I accomplished. Holy crap. I quit smoking. I've wow. recalibrated my digestion track, like some really <sighs> like hardcore, like investing energy and time and health. I didn't get that many excitement po posts comments on yeah. those posts 
Wow, I maybe got a yeah. quarter of that. And so that's where that's where the the data set comes from of realization that there's this something is, going on here. There's yeah. something going on here because me saying I got engaged got way more excitement. And from people who know me really well, it's not like, like, this is the thing is that there's people who know me really well of how I move in the world. Mm -hmm. And that married, it's like, if I'm getting married, there's a reason, logistical reason why this is happening. (laughs) It is not from a a romanticized love place. That's not, that's not, that's not how I move in the world. And yet the, the high pitched squealing (laughs) <laughs> that has happened like from people who know me really well they're like oh my god and they're like their voice octave like goes up like five octaves and they're like squealing and they're jumping up and down and they're like so excited for me like this is the best thing that's ever happened to me this is wild like because it's it is it's beyond um you know say you were like a straight woman who you know, wore yoga pants and, you know, did the whole, the the thing, followed the script, right? So you were a totally norm core woman in her mid to late twenties. This type of reaction would be, I mean, maybe still a little gross to me, but like expected, but you are like a full on counterculture warrior person who has, like you said, lived your life to break rules and to go against this script. And so it's wild that, like you said, people who know you and understand the way that you operate still have that same response to it. Like, And that's and- why that's why I started calling it the cult. It's a cult. Mm-hmm. It's a cult because people don't know why they're doing it. They don't understand why it doesn't even make sense that you would be excited for me in this squealing bouncy thing that's happening right now because it's not the reason why I'm doing it. But even with, and I've even said the words, like this is how deeply it's rooted in the scripting that I've said, listen, I'm getting married for, to gain marriage privilege for the legal ramifications of that. Mm -hmm. And still, Oh my God, I'm so excited for you. You guys are going to be so happy. Like, in the next breath, after I just said, this is not about this blissful thing. We're not celebrating my relationship. That's a different, that's a completely different conversation. Right. Well, the weird thing about that too is like, if somebody says you're going to be so happy, the implication is that you're not happy yet. Yeah. Oh, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, because like, because how could you be happy if you're not married? (laughs) But the boat, but the piece underneath that. So I think the piece and we can get into this a little bit later of like where all of these pieces come from. Mm -hmm. But the next phase. So I want to talk about the the, the next weird thing. (laughs) Stage, Stage B. Yeah, the next stage is so I've put out my I have announced I'm engaged. There's all the weirdness about being engaged. Um, And then people start obsessing, in particular women, start obsessing about my wedding. So now it's like I have to be happy about getting married and getting, I must be so excited about the wedding day. And what am I going to do on the wedding day? And what am I wearing on the wedding day? And what if I dress have I decided? And where's my hair happening and all this stuff? And I'm like, so people are like, you must be so excited. And I, and I would say, this is what I would say. No, <laughs> I'm not excited. I'm kind of annoyed that I have to go through, jump through all these hoops in the first place. Mm-hmm. And we're just going to city hall to sign the paperwork. <laughs> Do people be, get deflated by this? Does their excitement- they, they get angry. They get angry. Oh. They're like, you must be excited. You have to be excited, but you got to find something exciting about this. Like the, like you're starting your life, like you're starting your life with this person and you're not excited about this and what, and there's got to be, and I'm like, we're in the middle of a pandemic. So I don't even have people coming to the wedding right? because is we're going to city hall. And I said, and at some point, so this is the only way. 